Hey guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Erin and today we are back with another book review Friday and this book is surprise surprise Bad Man by Dathan Auerbach. So I told you guys that I wanted to read his newest book which I also had after I read Pen Pal which was last week's book review and I was just like you know I just have to read it because pen pal was so good that I just have to know what bad man is like I have a lot to say about this book and I'm really disappointed honestly like we'll get into it we'll get into it so let's I just wanted to let you guys know that this is a new filming smilming oh my god this is a new filming spot that I'm trying out, so let me know in the comments down below if you like this or not uh, compared to where I've been filming my videos. Um, I usually film in front of a window, but um, the window can, the sunlight from the window can cause distortion in the video. So I wanted to know if you guys like this better or not, so let me know. So let's talk about the cover. It's a soft and matte black cover, which I love. Bad Man is in this like gold and you can like feel it when you touch it. It's kind of like raised, which I love. And then it's just like a shopping cart, which actually is so good for the book. Um, it just makes so much sense. So yeah, it's you'll, you'll understand why in a minute, but let's read the inside of the cover so you guys can know what this is about. It says, Eric disappeared when he was three years old. Ben looked away for only a second at the grocery store, but that was all it took. His brother was gone, vanished right into the sticky air of the Florida panhandle. They say that you've got only a couple of days to find a missing person. 48 hours to conduct searches, knock on doors, and talk to witnesses. Two days to tear the world apart if there's any chance of putting yours back together. That's your window. For Ben, that window closed five years ago, leaving his life in ruins. He still looks for his brother, still searches while his stepmother sits and waits and whispers for Eric, refusing to leave the house that Ben's father can no longer afford. Now 20 and desperate for work, Ben takes a job on the night stock crew at the only place that will have him the store that blinked Eric out of existence. Ben can feel that there's something wrong there with the people, with his boss, with the graffitied bailer that shudders and moans and beckons, but he's in the right place. He knows the store has much to show him, so he keeps searching, except Ben misses the most important thing of all, that he should have stopped looking. Okay, so obviously we can tell that Dathan Auerbach has a thing of children. Uh, he really likes to write about like missing children and stuff like that, which I mean, I get it. It's a very fascinating topic, but um, if you are like really sensitive to missing persons cases, like children especially, I would probably not read this. It's pretty sad. Um, I love missing persons cases. It's one of my favorite things to read look on YouTube it's just I'm fascinated by missing persons cases so I think this book was right up my alley but um yeah so let's talk about it so the book begins with Eric as three and Ben is I think he's what 15 yeah I think he's 15 and they're playing um I think hide and seek in his house and Ben finally tells Eric we have to go to the grocery store um our mom needs something for dinner or something like that this is Eric's mom but Ben's stepmom so they have to go to the store and Eric just doesn't want to go he just doesn't feel like it he's three he's a kid it's he doesn't feel like it and Ben kind of like bribes him he's like I'll buy you Reese's Pieces if you come to the store with me and like be good and like do all the stuff I need you to and so Eric's like okay so he's kind of irritating Ben the whole walk to the grocery store he's pulling on his hand he's trying to sit down I mean you know three-year-olds three-year-olds are they're interesting I tell you what so he's kind of getting irritated he has a headache his leg is hurting um they don't really tell you why until later why his leg hurts so bad, but it's a pretty reoccurring theme that his leg is always pretty much in pain. Um, it was from an accident when he was younger, so. Anyways, so they're going to the store and he, Eric's getting on Ben's last nerve. He's just irritating him. 
And so when they get to the grocery store, Ben asks Eric, do you need to go to the bathroom? Which if you ever have a three year old, they always say no. And then guess what? Later on, they need to go to the bathroom. So of course he says, fine, they get the stuff that he needs. And as he's about to get into line, Eric says, I need to go to the bathroom. And Ben gets so mad. He's like, why wouldn't you just go when I asked you? And Eric's, you know, he's a three-year-old. That's just how kids are. And so Ben gets annoyed. And this man behind them says, I can take him if you want. And you can stay here and just buy my bread. And I'll give you the money for it. And Ben's like, no, that's creepy. Like, sorry. Like, I just don't feel comfortable with that. So Ben throws all of the groceries on a conveyor belt that's not like we're in use. It's just like someone's not working on it. So he just is trying to hold them there. And he takes Eric to the bathroom and Eric tries to go to the bathroom by himself and he accidentally drops his stuffed elephant called Stampy into the toilet and Ben gets so mad and he he just has to clean it so he's like just stand over there and let me do it and Eric gets upset because he's sad and then Ben is cleaning the elephant and he goes to turn around and say I'm sorry and Eric is gone and that was the last time he ever saw his little brother and he could not find him anywhere. He ran out screaming Eric's name. They called the police. He just vanished into thin air. He was just gone. And Ben was devastated. It was his brother, his 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 little brother. It was so sad. And then it jumps ahead to five years later and Ben is now 20. And the stepmother does not take this well. She's pretty... Um, she's pretty much had a breakdown, honestly. She's very distraught. Um, she doesn't know how to cope. She doesn't know how to move on. She pretty much, it's really sad. I mean, it's really hard for them. And the dad's working constantly because their house is too much money. They don't have enough money coming in. It's bad. So Ben gets a job and the only place that will hire him is the grocery store where his little brother went missing. And the man working there doesn't know who Ben is and he wants to keep it that way because this man at the grocery store, I think his name's Mr. Palmer, he's not a nice man. He's very mean and he was no help during Eric's disappearance. So Ben doesn't want him to know who he is because he knows he won't give him the job. So Ben gets the job and he makes friends with Marty, who is a 19, I think he's 19, I think he's a 19 year old working at the grocery store too. So basically what they do is they work in the stock crew. So they work from about 10 or 11 at night till about six in the morning and they get the store ready for everyone else, like the cashiers and stuff like that. So it's pretty much just them two at night alone in this grocery store. And like he makes really good friends with Marty and then Marty tells him, well, Marty finds out that Ben's little brother is Eric and like his missing posters all over the store and stuff like that. And they talk about it a little bit. And then Marty tells him a couple months later that he saw Eric six months ago. And Ben freaks out on him. He's like, why didn't you tell me you knew? Like, why aren't you saying anything? Why are you lying to me? And Marty tells him, I saw him in the woods like I saw him I was walking home and he was just there and so Ben becomes very I don't want to say obsessed but kind of obsessed with finding his little brother he's looking for any clues and it takes him down a very a very dark winding spiral because there is so much to this town that no one knew I mean this this place is crazy I mean honestly and that's pretty much all I'm gonna tell you the rest of the book is literally just Ben putting clues together to find his little brother um I really liked this book until the end um it was very disappointing to me the ending um I get why he did it I understand I don't like it. I don't think it was a good ending. I would never have ended this book this way if it was my book. Again, I'm not him. I'm not an author, so I can't say that. Would I have changed it if I could? Yes, I did not like it. It was very disappointing to me. 
honestly the thing that ran through my head as soon as I finished it was wow I just wasted all this time reading this book for this to end like this and I was very mad because for me if the ending is so dissatisfactory it's a waste of time and I know that's not a great way to look at it but I can't help but feel like I wasted my time if it doesn't end good and that sounds so mean and the book was not a waste of time it was a very good book very well done I just think it could have ended better I don't I don't like that and for me I on Goodreads I am on Goodreads um a little bit I don't really write reviews on Goodreads I just more track what books I've read and what I want to read and I rate the books and stuff I had to give this like a three because I just the ending took it down so much for me this could have been a five out of five book and it just was so disappointing that I couldn't I couldn't handle it um I will say I kind of guessed who had taken Eric I kind of figured it out pretty much early on in the book I just didn't know for sure um, there were a lot of suspects on my list because honestly everyone in this town is pretty weird um, the grocery store manager, people that work in the grocery store, neighbors, his own family's weird. I mean, it just seems like everyone's very odd. Also, I will say the book had some loose ends I felt like they didn't clear up. There were some things about a school that they never really went into whole details about. It's like they led you on a trail with something and then switched over and never went back to it do you know what I'm saying like they forgot to go back and like tell you what happened or he did Dathan I guess but I guess he just chose not to incorporate that there were just a few things I read in there that they never touched on again and I was kind of like okay but why not like what does this mean so that was kind of annoying um I just felt like there were a lot of loose ends um Again, did not like the ending, did not like it at all. Really dissatisfactory in my opinion. I know there are probably some people that love the ending because the ending does, <sighs> it correlates with the book, I guess, but it just, <sighs> is correlate even the right word? I guess it just matches with the book. It just makes sense, but it's not good. Like it's not a nice ending. It's unfair to me that I, <laughs> spent so much time reading this book and I got a crappy ending that makes me really mad but join the club I guess I just I don't know the ending I can't tell you guys because if you read this I don't want you guys to get spoiled it's just not a great ending I didn't see it coming to be honest which is kind of interesting because if I look back on it I probably could have seen it coming but whatever it just made me very upset. I thought the plot was well well written. I love the idea of it. I think the grocery store aspect's fun. I mean, them alone in a grocery store for like how that how many hours they're there. That's I mean, it's creepy. It's scary. Like, it's good. And there are so many suspect that suspects that it makes you question how many people are involved, who's involved, what's going on in this town. Like, it's pretty crazy honestly it's a it's well written in that aspect I just felt like there were so many things that they didn't answer in the book and that the ending sucked <laughs> yeah that's pretty much it honestly that's pretty much it for this book honestly I don't have a lot to say because there's so many things I mean this is a thick book this is way bigger than pen pal this took me a couple of days to read Granted, I wasn't reading constantly. I was just reading, like, for a few hours a day. Um, I think it's a good book. I like it. I like the idea. I just don't understand why he had to go the way he did. I just, I get that was his thing, and it, and he liked it, but uh, it was so disappointing for me. It was just such a letdown, honestly. I'm very sad about it. But yeah, I think it's good. I think it's a good book to read. I think it's worth taking the time to read it. I don't think it's a waste of time. I just think just think that it felt like a waste of time because of how sad I was about the ending. But I do think it's a pretty good book. Um 
please let me know if you've read this book and what you think about it. I would love to know your thoughts because I'm sure everyone has a different opinion on this. Um, yeah, so this was Bad Man by Dathan Auerbach. And I... I'm still gonna say read Pen Pal if you want to read any of his books because I think Pen Pal is much better. Um, I just liked Pen Pal more. So I'm, yeah, that's, that's my uh, review on Bad Man. I'm sorry I didn't give you too much details, but honestly, if I went into detail, we'd be here for a couple hours and uh, you would have the whole book spoiled. So I'm not gonna do that for you guys. So yeah. Just let me know what you guys think. Um, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, if you have any book recommendations, please leave them. Please leave them in the comments down below. Yeah. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.